This is my first memory of you, Andrew. Always holding this dictaphone, standing there, watching me, making notes. I don't even know if this memory is real, but I think so. After this, there is a big black hole. Nothing left. Nothing I can remember. But something must have happened. The next memory takes place after we move to the new house. Nobody is here anymore. It's only me and my memories. You told me to sit here, and then you watched me and spoke in this weird language. I couldn't get up. For hours, I think. It definitely felt like hours. You stopped recording and put me back onto the chair when I tried to get up. And then I waited, and you recorded, and I waited. I hate this chair. Better days, family. You visited me and my dad more often after Mom died. Not only once a week, but every day very soon. I wasn't sad because Mom was dead. I was sad because you were around so often. Sometimes I just stared into the flames for minutes, hours. I don't know. It was like a trance, and I only woke up when hearing the clicking noise of your dictaphone when you stopped recording. I saw bottles more and more often. Dad drank sometimes. Weird days. Dad homeschooled me. I think Andrew gave him money because he didn't need to get a job. He was a horrible teacher. This was one of the few times I left the house. We went to a fair in the city, and Dad and I took a ride on the Ferris wheel. He cried while we were sitting there. Andrew didn't go with us. I think he was afraid of the height, but I'm not sure. But he was watching us from below all the time. At the window, I often stared at the son of a neighbor. I think he never saw me. At least I hope so. Every day he went to the swing and was there for about an hour. It was like a ritual. A ritual of freedom. I often fantasized to stab Andrew while cooking. I wonder why I never did it. I always made the food. My father was bad at cooking, and Andrew. I guess we never asked and wouldn't have. He ate less and less over the years. Andrew sat there every day when we were eating. He never ate with us. He just recorded, and we spoke in short sentences.
My father always wore shirts. I don't know why. He had gotten them for work, but never stopped wearing them after he had stopped working. I found them one afternoon. I always wondered where he put them. It was here. My father's old shoes. I don't have the heart to throw them away. One day, my father left me and Andrew. It was at night, and he was at my bed. At first, I thought it was Andrew, but then I realized it was him, my father. He was drunk, and he was weeping. I could barely hear what he was saying. It was so low-voiced. He told me that he loved me, but that he had to go, and I stared at him and said nothing. He went away. I did not cry. Five hours after my father had left, I went to the street and it was very bright outside. I hadn't been out there for a couple of years. It was kind of surreal. I tried to find my father. I had only a few things with me. He killed himself that night. He did not want to come back. I became homeless and lived on the streets for a couple of months. And now, I'm back. I still have the key, and it's still working. My heartbeat is very fast. Is he still here? I can't hear anything. Maybe. Maybe not. Nothing has changed. If he's still here, he has to be in his room. Andrew is still here. I didn't see him, but he is here. After all this time, still recording. And I'm back home. Andrew, I'm sorry. Can I live here again? Do you forgive me?